I've wrapped the goggles so that I would look extra cool like I belong. And you can see it happening here. It's one of the most painful bites in Arizona. But we had another moment where Rosalind did that thing. Good morning, guys. Um, it is a uh, less than ideal start to the day. I just broke something. Let me show you. I knocked over, what is this, sesame oil, Ken? Yeah. I knocked over a um, bottle of sesame oil and the glass is everywhere. It's everywhere. Now normally when you break glass, it's very, very easy to kind of clean it up and then, ah! shh, Irene, you have to stay right there. We have to get the kids like set up in the high chair and on the couch so they can't step on any of this. Um, normally when we break glass, we will sweep it all up and then afterwards go in with a wet paper towel to help pick everything up. That's a trick that Ken learned back when he was teaching science. That's how you clean up broken beakers and test tubes. But with oil, it's gonna be really difficult to use water to kind of pick up the glass. So, we've got an oil spill. We've got an oil spill. It's our very own, I don't know, Exxon Mobil Alaska oil spill or BP right here in our own home. Okay, I'm gonna take Irene into another room while you deal with this, okay, Ken? So if you find that you've got yourself a large spill, especially something like oil that's really kind of pain to clean, um, one of the things to do is add something that'll kind of congeal it. And so I'm gonna add some flour. <laughs> I'm gonna make a bigger mess, but I'm gonna add some flour to this. And the hope is, is that the flour will, will kind of um, make it more easily or readily to, uh, to kind of sweep up and absorb. Now if you happen to own a cat and have some kitty litter, this, that'll do a much better job of cleaning up oil. All purpose flour is all purpose. Yeah? Now some of you might be saying, Ken, why in the world are you making a bigger mess? Just wipe up the oil, just mop it up. Well, here's why I'm doing this. Let me show you why. This is actually a good demonstration of, of kind of how how oil and things like this sort of thing work. If we look right here, we have some oil, and so if we wipe that oil up with a rag, it gets wiped up, but there is still a thin layer of oil there, especially if you have a lot of it. By doing this, what's happening is that the flour is absorbing, a, and you can see it happening here, is absorbing a significant amount of the oil. And so as you wipe, it is much easier. It's, again, it's just kind of like gelled mass, but as you wipe, just put myself a glass here. It is much, much cleaner than doing it the other way. Um, and there's a lot less oil. I can feel that it's a little gritty, but that's easier to clean up when we can get some soap and water down here in a little bit. Now I think everybody has a different like protocol for cleaning up glass breaks in their household. For us, um, the protocol is just like as soon as I heard the glass break, I looked over, it's like somebody break, I was like, yeah, and we're like, okay, stop, nobody move. Uh, Rosalind was sitting eating breakfast, like, Rosalind, stay on the chair, don't move. Irene is in her high chair, like, nobody move. Okay, damage your poor. <laughs> I was like, I broke a bottle of some liquid or something, this glass here, here, and here. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna come get you, Rosalind. I picked Rosalind, I was like, okay, you need to stay right here on the couch. Don't move. And then we got Irene on, uh, Heidi was like, okay, I'm gonna take Irene. I'm gonna take Ross and we're gonna go in the room, lock there. I was like, okay, we gotta get the dogs. And so the dogs are contained, the children are contained in the room with Heidi, and then I'm doing the cleanup mess. And so we've got, all got the protocol. Um, since we've got a baby that's not crawling anymore, but we've still got a baby. Um, one method I use to make sure I get as much of the glass as I can, um, is I look around to see how, whether, where the farthest piece of glass was. So the furthest piece of glass I can find is right here, this shard right here. And so you saw the explosion kind of starting from the pantry and moving towards in this direction. And so it kind of shot in the line. So this is probably the furthest glass I've really got. Um, and so I'm gonna make just a huge radius here and just gonna go all the way around. And I need to clear all this stuff out of the way, move all the chairs, move the trash cans, everything out of the way, and then just sweep the entire thing. Couch and the table have moved over, chairs on the other side of, or the other room, and I have cleared this entire area. We're gonna sweep everything from over there all the way across. We're gonna sweep all the way to the couch 
everything to make sure it is all contained, no glass particles. There was a time, many years ago, when we broke glass, I cleaned up what I could see, and then I would say, if there's a missing glass shard, I'll find it later, in my foot. No big deal, just a little blood, take it out with some tweezers, put a band on it, we're good to go. Repeat that process for a few weeks, and all the glass will have been picked up. Now that I have children, I cannot do that. <laughs> And so what we do is a house-wide decontamination to make sure no glass shards are found anywhere. Everything is picked up. How things change. <laughs> what is something else that you've done that is different now that you've got kids? Whereas before you're like, eh, it's fine. But now you've got kids, you're like, nope, we gotta do this like level 100. Gotta go full blast. Um, let me know in the comments down below what you've changed since you've had kids, if you've got kids, or perhaps your parents changed when you arrived. <laughs> and we're all clean. All clean, all gone, all better. The upside to cleaning oil with your hands is that your hands are smil smilky. <laughs> <laughs> Silky smooth. Good morning, guys. I hope that you all are having a lovely day. Check out my goggles. These are actually your goggles, aren't they, honey? I mean, I bought them for Rosalind. Oh, did you really? Yeah. Um, we are on our way to the Arizona Science Center. It's, oh. Oh, is baby sister asleep back there, Rosalind? Okay, I have to talk quietly. We are going on a very fun adventure today. We are going to the Arizona Science Center, which is in Phoenix. And um, I brought the goggles so that I would look extra cool like I belong. Ken fell asleep at the keyboard last night editing, so I hope that you all enjoyed yesterday's video um, where we went to the aquarium. If you haven't seen it, it will be linked down below and probably in one of the iCards as well, but it was so much fun. It was a lot of fun. I just, I, I had one of those days. You ever have those days where you're just like, Suddenly you're tired. That's oh, kind of yeah. what happened. I was just like, I'm fine, I'm fine, and then I'm exhausted. Okay, sorry about that. Russell doesn't want us to talk right now because I guess Irene is napping, so we'll talk to you more in a little bit once we get to the Science Center. So we are starting the day out at the Science Center. We only have um, season passes to a couple of places, but I think that having passes to the Science Center is really important to us. If you guys don't know, Ken is a math teacher, and he used to teach science as well. His major was molecular and cellular biology, and both of our girls are named after scientists. Are you so excited, Irene? Um, and I just think it's really important to teach kids to be excited about science and, um, you know, care about science. So. Um, this is one of my favorite ways to do it, and the other bonus is that it is air conditioned, which is a huge problem here in Arizona, trying to find season passes, things that kids can do that is air conditioned, because getting yearly passes to the zoo, while it's really cool, is not something I want to do when it's 115 degrees outside. So anyways, on we go. Ready? Three, two, one. Rosalind is rocking her Pete the Cat shirt. Could you scoot back so we can show them your outfit? Her Pete the Cat shirt and her chemistry skirt. <laughs> There was a time when I had all the amino acids memorized and their letters and everything and I knew the DNA codes that led to each one. <laughs> Not anymore, but no. once upon a time. <laughs> you want me to go up the slide? <laughs> She's smart, all right. 
using her data as a test dummy to make sure it's safe. Look at Roslyn, there's nothing wrong, see? I'm fine, I'm fine, see? <laughs> Don't be scared! Don't be scared? But I'm scared, Roslyn, what do I do? Yeah. It farts. Stop. Here, look. Mm -hmm. You're not scared? Come on, come show me. Rosie. Go, go, go. She keeps coming back and then she's like, oh, there's too many kids. I think you mean to say sacrificial lambs, like she's trying to sacrifice me. She keeps running into people. <laughs> a quick lunch break out on this balcony. Now we did not know this existed before until we came with our friends Petite Fox. Um, who are awesome. Who are awesome. I will link their channel down below. You should definitely subscribe to them. They're super duper sweet. Um, and also that will be in our Science Center playlist too, which I will have linked somewhere in the iCard if you want to watch what that adventure was like. But I'm really glad that we found it because by the time we get to the fourth floor, we're ready to eat. And we planned ahead this time and packed lunches. So, um, what's wrong? What happened? That, I think, is a small velvet ant, which we don't know is one of the most painful bites in Arizona. Actually, I think in the Southwest. And it was on my eye. Well, not on my eye, but like right about my eye. I was like, oh my gosh, get it away. Um, I need you to go away, sir. Just... <laughs> Always on the floor somewhere now. Go away. Problem solved. It's very brave of you to stand up to that bug, honey. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> How dare it. How dare that bug fly almost into my eye. <laughs> it is so warm out here. Yeah, we like, there's this tiny little stretch of shade. shade. We, we've arranged ourselves. Here, let me show them. Stay inside let me show. Shade. Let me show what we did. So there's like a bunch of really bright stuff and then there's just these like tiny little things. So it's just like a stripe of shade. And so <laughs> we moved. Yep, and it's still really hot. Rosalyn, this is Dada's water bottle cap. It's not for your necklace. I mean, what? I think it's gonna make an excellent like politician or something one day because she does a lot of like uh, I know no. but here's my viewpoint Mommy. and it's mine <laughs> a lot in this area where we very first started so I'm hoping that maybe Roslyn will be able to face up to that fear of the slide that she had earlier because I'm hoping it won't be quite as crowded as it was because there were a lot of like school trips and summer camps oh we have to stop we've got to take a quick pause for an anatomy lesson I guess Roslyn's practicing her surgery skills we found somebody's heart This is not a dragon, this is a person, honey. Did you see you oh. Come on, come on, come here. <laughs> or that. You ready? Go around that way, honey. Watch the way he just did. Go. You can do this, honey. I know you're you're brave enough. Okay, honey. His turn, and then it's our turn, okay? Can I show you how you make it fart? Oh, you she can, wants to show you. Look, you, Roslyn. Oh. You can, you can push this, this. Oh, this. off she goes. She made the floor. Yes. You can just do this. Roslyn, you did it. Do you want to go again? Yeah. Okay. Roslyn, tell Daddy what you did. I did that one. 
Did you really? Yeah. Without sacrificing that? <laughs> I'm gonna try to remember to link our Instagrams down below. I don't always remember to do it, but if you do um, follow us on Instagram, you get kind of a, a rare look into what we're doing for the day. And um, Ken's is the Ken and Little Cub, and mine is Heidi C. Kim. But I just wanted to show you, he got the cutest picture of Irene. And Ken is much funnier than I am, so he always gets the best stuff. But he got this super cute picture. That is the thing that you guys are missing if you are not following us on Instagram. So be sure to do that. We had the best time at the Science Center. Did you have fun, Ken? I did have fun. I thought it was a lot yeah. of fun. It's getting harder to go out with both of them now that Irene literally just wants to run around all over the place. I love the Science Center. Um, I'd love to hear from you guys. What other places do you have like memberships to? Um, I know a lot of people do the zoo, but some of our memberships are going to start expiring here pretty soon. And we like to get a couple each year so that we can kind of just always have an adventure whenever we feel like it. Um, so let us know what you have memberships to down below or where you would like one. Um, because we've been discussing a couple of options. Mm -hmm. I don't I'm know. i to figure out where we're going to do next. Yeah, and, and if you've had some before and they were a disappointment, tell us that too, so we know not to do that. I had another moment while we were at the uh, Science Center, and now I'm afraid that I'm reading too much into everything, but we had another moment where Rosalind did that thing where she was like talking to me and doing really well. We did not get it on camera this time, but then she just stares off into space. <laughs> And it was about 10 seconds and I couldn't get her attention and then she just popped back in like nothing happened. I don't know, I feel like a balance between am I reading too much into things or is something actually going on? But I definitely am keeping my eye open. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, we talked about it a little bit on a surprise and doctor's visit. I will try to remember to include it in the iCard. But there is some concern that Rosalind might have had an absence seizure the other day. So our doctor wants us to be like really paying attention. So. Um, I noticed it, it was about 10 seconds, and I like put it in my phone, but it's hard because sometimes it can just look like spacing out too. So we'll keep an eye on it. We have an appointment coming up. Um, you can check out that video if you wanna hear a little bit more about it. I'm gonna go ahead and end the vlog. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, uh, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to hit the bell. Join the notification team, guys. That's what all the cool kids are doing and it costs you nothing. Let us know down in the comments what your favorite science project was when you were a kid. I remember when I was in elementary school, we did a solar oven outside, which you can definitely do here in Arizona, and I just thought that was so, so cool. So let us know that. Maybe we can come up with some fun experiments we could do with the kids this summer. And we will talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.